Hi, welcome back to Thinking of Pi. Today, I'll be showing you how to use an LED bar graph. So here's a picture of the wiring diagram and a picture of the schematic. You'll notice that it does look a lot more complicated than our previous projects. But the LED bar graph is just a collection of 10 separate LEDs. So we're gonna be using the same concepts that we've used in previous videos. There's just 10 LEDs this time. So we're gonna need 10 resistors and 10 additional wires. So let's go check it out. So here it all is. We've got our LED bar graph. We've got 10 220 ohm resistors. And we'll be needing a total of 11 jumper wires. Look at all those. Let's get going. LED bar graph is going to go, oh, we'll stick it right here. Now, sometimes I like to not push it in all the way. So you can look right down in here and see all your pins. It makes it a little bit easier when you're wiring up this kind of thing. And then we'll just start by putting the resistors in each one, just one at a time. All right, I'm gonna pause it right here. I just wanna make a note that you wanna pay close attention to your resistors and make sure none of the leads are touching. Actually, huh, I've got two resistors in the same hole on the breadboard. All right, there we go. None of the resistors are in the same hole. None of them are touching. They're all in, everything's in. Now, onto the wires. All right, there we go. Everything's wired together. And I just want to make a note here. I'm not using 10 different power supply lines. I've got all the resistors plugged into this uh, voltage rail down the side. And we got our jumper wire going from our 3.3 volts down to this rail and the power will flow right down that rail supplying power to each of our LEDs. So let's go ahead and move over to the computer and we'll write some code and make it work. All right so here we are logged into the Pi through VNC. I already have some code put together that we're going to be using for this project. Instead of using the GPIO0 that we've used in the past, we're going to be using a different one here called RPI.GPIO. I feel like this one works a little bit better for this type of a project. So let's go through the code and I'll show you how it works. First thing we're doing here is we've got our LED pins to find in an array because we do have an array of LEDs, right? We've got 10 of them. So instead of defining 10 separate variables, we can do it all right here and then just reference this one array and each of the pins. Now we are using a different numbering system. In the past, we've used the software definition of the pins. This time we're using the physical ones. So the numbering is a little bit different. Uh, when we start this up, we're going to be setting all of the pins one at a time, just through this loop right here. Um, set them all as an output and then we're going to set them all to high which is basically the same thing as turning it on. Then we're going to basically loop through each of the pins, each of the LEDs and cycle through it on off on off and in between each one of, the, one of those we're going to sleep and that determines basically the speed at which the LEDs are going to cycle. This loop down here cycles it to from one pin to the next. The 
first loop is just uh, turn it on off on off. This one's controlling which one specifically. The rest of this is really just uh, control methods. The first one here um, is going to be if we decide to turn it off then it will reset everything so it doesn't do weird stuff. And this right here is the main loop that's going to run the loop up here. And then if we press control C, it's going to run the destroy loop, which resets everything. So let's see if this works. There we go, look at that. Now when the LED gets to the one on the far right, you'll notice it kind of pauses. That's actually because in the code up here, it's actually reading pin zero twice and turning it on twice. So there will be that little bit of a pause right there. But that's all there is to it. It wasn't that hard, was it? So next time, we're going to be looking at um, some more things that we can do with the LED. It's actually, we're actually going to be looking at um, PWM or pulse width modulation. I didn't even know until recently that you could do this with the Raspberry Pi. I've done it before on the Adreno, which does support analog outputs, but we'll actually be doing the PWM with software and programming, so make sure you tune in next time uh, to check out how to use the PWM function on the Raspberry Pi. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, let me know what you thought in the comments, and if you're feeling a little bit behind and lost and not really sure what you're watching, um, be sure to check out the previous videos in this series, and you can get a little bit more background and um, understanding of what's all been going on here. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you all next week. Thanks.